This is The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Well, the Super Falcons uh, boycott training over unpaid bonuses. I mean, or bonus if you want to see an allowances. These days, it becomes a very big issue for uh, people not to be paid, you know? So you have uh, matches that they have actually played. You have that of Botswana, what have you, all of the games they have played including the fees for the camp. I mean, this is totally unfair if you ask me. Do we need a soothsayer to say that it's not fair? What's the motivation for the people? Especially with all of this, one cannot even say that that's the reason they lost the game uh, you know, to Morocco. Could that have been the reason? But I think the girls have been on top of their game despite all of the happenings. We have uh, Monday Thomas, as always, join us this beautiful Friday morning as we talk sports and we stay with the Nigerian uh, you know, football and all of the sporting activities. Monday, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here uh, talking sports. Uh, let's get on with it. All right. So f first, what, let's start off. I know it's past, but uh, you were very, very positive about the performance of the girls, the Super Eagles, I beg your pardon, the Super Falcons then, uh, playing Morocco. You were very positive, but it really didn't turn out that way. What do you think went wrong? Okay, I mean, uh, I don't think I don't think any person full of empathy will want to criticize the girls, will want to criticize the whole team. I think everyone did their best. I mean, every department was working. What really happened on that day when we took on the host nation Morocco? I think it was just football happening. I mean, football sometimes can be very cruel. Football sometimes might not give you what you deserve because the Super Falcons deserve to win that game, even with the nine players on the pitch. You can see their resilience. You can see that they were high spirited. They were very tenacious in defending and they were able to stop the Moroccans from scoring, even when they went down by two ladies. But also, so there are some arguments that uh, after we scored the first goal, if you can remember, we already got uh, gotten uh, Alima Ayin. They sent off in the first or uh, the first two minutes of the second 45 minutes, and Nigeria went ahead to score via non goal by the Moroccans. I think we should have defended better, knowing that we have nothing to lose anymore. We just have to protect the goal line. But we are still out there, and the Moroccans created two chances immediately after we scored the first goal. And the converted one. I mean, when you are the host nation, you have the home advantage. You can see the lasers that were flying about. Camp are not talking about it because it's okay to have home advantage in a football game. So they did that very best. I mean, even when going down by two ladies, they were still able to force the game to penalties. And goodness gracious, this Monday came on and almost scored. She had scored, and then Nigel will be talking about playing the finals with South Africa. But football just happened. They gave him their very best, but sometimes uh, you might not get your best, might just get what football has, has to give you. And uh, that was the situation against Morocco. But away from that, I think the Super Falcons should be in uh, another great spirit to take on uh, the couple queens of Zambia because it's a game of uh, great importance at least. We've clinched a World Cup sport, and if we finish third in Africa at the 2022 Women's Cup of Nations, we had a nine-time African champion. There's still some respect in the name called Nigeria as far as women football is concerned. But there are also situations that the ladies have not been paid their complete bonuses. So, so what do you say now? Uh, um, Monday Thomas, would you say that um, right. we should still put the respect? Should there still be some respect? And and uh, we also know that there's supposed to be a game. I don't know if that's actually changed or it would change anything. Uh, but the girls are supposed to take on Zambia today, being Friday. Uh, what do you make of this development? Are we really learning? Is there anything wrong with us as a people? Well, I didn't get your question, Mercy. Can you go again, please? So the girls are supposed to take on Zambia. Do you think that that will become, uh, you know, that's going to happen? Will the girls go ahead and play the game? And what do you make of the situation that uh, the Super Falcons have not been paid allowances? You, what do you, how do you describe the situation? And my question is, what do you think is wrong with us as a country? 
Okay. First off, I would, I would, I would, I would love to talk about the game. It's certainly going to be a very difficult game for the Super Falcons of Nigeria, knowing that uh, they are assigned. Many people expected them to clinch the, the trophy, but now they're playing third place. And coupled with the fact that the ladies have not been motivated enough, even after that uh, fantastic performance against Morocco, although they lost that particular game, I just think it's a, it, it, it also goes down to what is really happening at the administrative point. I mean, the NFF, they are not doing their very best. These ladies have gone far to secure 250000 for making it to the semifinals of the uh, Wapcon. They have secured 750000 for making it to the uh, World Cup. I mean, they deserve to be paid their bonuses. I think last time, uh, the last time I got an information about that, it was a thousand dollars each of them instead of ten thousand dollars. So I think it's just an administrative problem. I- I'm very sure, Mercy, this is not the first time we're going to talk about how the administrative, uh, administrative system, especially when it comes to sports in the country, is not really doing their best. And then we've talked time and time again with charity how we can, uh, Say things that could make things work, but you know, it's not just working. And uh, I, I don't want to just keep on because every time we talk, it looks like we are just talking off the dog's uh, feather. And uh, it's quite t- uh, tiresome. But right now, we just need to believe in the ladies to deliver the third place. But I don't see that happening because they are taking on the Zambian side who are very, very tough. You can remember how the loss in the the semi-final to South Africa, the Bayana Bayana was struggling 90 minutes against the Copper Queens. They have to be decided from a penalty that was awarded controversially in the 90th minute. So with all of this happening, the Super Falcons not being paid complete bonuses, and of course also uh, with that pain of losing in the semi-final, it's going to be a very daunting game for the Super Falcons later on by 9 p.m. today against the Copper Queens of uh, Zambia. So, in other words, uh, should we cancel, I mean, or sh- should we give up on the aspiration that we probably would have clinched to the 10th title? Uh, sh- should we just give up and just, uh, you know, move on? Uh, for, for, for some reason, for some reason, I personally wanted the Super Falcons to win this. Forget the fact that we've won it for the ninth time. I mean, this 10th time would have been so important because this is the first time we are seeing a 12 nation, top of nations in the women, in women's football in Africa. And it would have been really been massive because the other times we don't get to see 12 teams and winning against a 12 team, a 12 team nations cup will really exert how good you are in the continent. But come on, they have to play against the host nations who have home advantage. But I think, I think the ladies should just play for pride. They should play for their name. They should play on now because people are watching them. But for the country, I know we still have the 30 Nigerians right there. We, we are telling these ladies time and time again, and uh, it's not really fair. But I'm still expecting them to put up a great performance. But a great result, I, I'm not expecting that. Mm. So um, uh, as b- before we move away from, you know, the Super Falcons now uh, and look at, you know, the World Athletic Championship that's going on, uh, what are your predictions for the game today, uh, Zambia and the Super Falcons? Zambia beat Nigeria. It are by penalties, but Nigeria are not going to clinch third place. It's quite, it's very it's, it's a it's a brutal fit from my point of view. My head is shattered now, and I'm asking uh, Monday Thomas, where's your patriotism? I mean, you are very patriotic at this point. It feels like you're giving up already on the girls. But, um, I'm not giving up on the girls, all right? Uh, well, let's move away. That's on a lighter note. Uh, let's look at another one. The Athletic Federation of Nigeria, the technical director, is saying that, uh, believes in the Nigerian team, saying that the performance so far has been quite impressive, despite not even, uh, you know, winning or clinging to any medal at the point. Do, do you think that uh, that's true? Has the performance been great? And if the performance is that fantastic, why don't we have a medal? Well, so first of all, I'd like to just uh, uh, go back uh, in history a little bit. The last time Nigeria won uh, two medals at the World Athletic Championship, it was way back in 2013 uh, in Moscow, Russia. Nigeria won two medals. 
And if that was the last time we got two medals at the World Electric Championship, that forward to 2019, it's the last time we ever won a medal, and that was by H.P. Blomey winning a bronze medal. Uh, that was the only time we won a medal. The last time we won a medal, that was in uh, Doha 2019. And now we are in 2022, the 18 World Electric Championship, where we saw uh, Toby Lova and Moussan having a, a, a record time, 12.41 seconds in uh, the event she, uh, she partakes in. And we, we had young stars like uh, Imabo Mutioko, who was uh, very great at the African Electric Championship. And uh, we had some names already, the likes of uh, Fable Opili in 200 meters, Grace Moko, Chao, Rosemary, uh, Chukuma, and as well as uh, the Discord Shoah, uh, Choma Onyekere. And uh, we thought we had a great team. But oh, we also also need to take a look at the preparation to this World Electric Championship currently ongoing in the United States. In the first event, the debut, the cotton radar for the team Nigeria, it was uh, a hammer thrower. A hammer thrower, she didn't do so well. And the next event was a 4 by 400 mix relay. According to reports, the team just arrived in the U.S. What was the preparation? What were they thinking? The team just arrived in the U.S. that same day, and they have to get, get on the truck. And you expect good results from them? Well, it's not to be, because I think uh, form follows function. If things form properly, then they are certainly going to function accurately. So the form of the FN, that is the Nigerian Federation, the, the Athletic Federation of uh, Nigeria, I think they need to go back to the drawing board. I know that's a cliche. They keep saying they're going back to the drawing board, but nothing really happens. But I think they really need to, when they say go back to the drawing board, that you really go back to it and to see how they can restrategize for a better, a better team Nigeria at any big athletic competition. Well, for now, we are an absolute fiasco. I thought athletic came back to life in Nigeria when we saw the African Electric Championship, the match of uh, Imamon Keoko. And just last month, the match of uh, Toby Lobo Musan was prolific in that event she partook in. But what is happening now? It's quite a shame. Although, why I went back to history, just to tell people that we don't get to do well at the World Electric Championship. But... When you look at what these names have done already in their previous event, we thought we had to go for something this World, uh, World Electric Championship, but it's not just to be. It's going to end in two days, and we don't get to see Team Nigeria anywhere close to the, to the medal table. The United States are dominating, but thank goodness we have African teams who are also doing greatly, the likes of Ethiopia and Kenya. Well, uh, quickly now, uh we we have three days just before the end of that. I mean, if I'm very correct, uh, before the end of the championships. And we haven't, you know, registered any medal or any sort of significance. Do you think that there's any magic that can happen? Because those who are calling the shorts are very positive that uh, we, we, there's still hope for us. Do you think there's anything that we can do? Uh, any hope for a medal or something? In, in two days, the competition is going to be over. And uh, if you can see, the likes of Opel O'Pili made it to uh, the semi-finals of the 200 meters. But he lost. He finished about six. The likes of uh, O'Didi O'Wu okay, also made it to the 200, uh, 200 meters semi-finals. I mean, the best has not been heard from him. So I don't think there's any hope for Team Nigeria to get any medal. Uh, that's uh, one elected championship. You just have to be honest with ourselves. Well, the CAF Awards has, uh, came, and of course, we've seen the likes of Asisato Swola. And on the other hand, uh, you have Sadio Mani. Uh, what do you make generally, for instance, I mean, oh. making of that awards and looking at Asisat clinging to the awards? Some people think differently, but what are your thoughts? All right, okay, let's uh, talk so the, uh, the Women's CAF Awards. I'd like to start with Asisa Rosola before I head to Sadio Mane. So Asisa Rosola winning it for the fifth time, and that's the record for any, any male and female two times in a football competition in Africa, and that is quite great. Asisa Rosola, she scored about 20 goals in 19 appearances for Barcelona in the last season. And uh, despite not playing the most part of the Women's Cup of Nations, I think she, she, she deserves it. 
because we take a look at the other uh, counterparts. I'm talking about the uh, John Joya of uh, Cameroon and the lady from Zambia. She was the top one. Uh, she was uh, definitely the best among those uh, those names, and uh, she deserved it. She deserved it, but for the peak time. Uh, that's certainly uh, a, a, a great one, a record-breaking one for uh, Shishara Shola. And we, we pray that she gets to, of course, uh, return to fitness and we get to see her in a proper and an informal Shishara Shola right there at the FIFA Women's World Cup next year. But for Fabio Mane, we need for the second consecutive time, 2019 and 2022. It has to be him. It has to be Sadio Mane. And what a day it was for him yesterday, just going his first goal for Bayern Munich and traveling from the U.S. to Morocco. And he had to win the men's player of the year. In my opinion, he is simply the best. Uh, he did really for Liverpool. did fantastically well for Senegal winning their first African in 2021. He deserved it. He deserved it. And I think uh, more is yet to come for the big man. And I hope he will be able to fly the, the flag of Senegal at the upcoming Qatar 2022 World Cup. Well, uh, uh, at this point, uh, we'd like to say thank you, Monday Thomas, for being part of the show. We appreciate all of your thoughts right here. It's always a pleasure to be here. Mercy, do you have yourself a fantastic weekend ahead. You too. And that said, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that's the size of our conversation on the breakfast, a beautiful Friday morning. We'd like to keep it very light-hearted. And we will return on Monday. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it will be beautiful to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Book. We'll have a fantastic morning.